through how the recruiting process works. And this is really designed for people that are new to talent acquisition or the recruiting space or trying to figure out how it works. Um, or job seekers. So if you're in the market right now and you're looking for a potential opportunity, uh, you may find their whole recruiting process to be a little confusing. Um, what I want to do is share just a very high level uh, insight into how the process works. And then a couple of tips right at the end, just to give you some takeaways to think about how you're implementing and managing your own job seeking process. And uh, this is all based on the experience that I have. Um, I spent three years as a recruiting leader um, running uh, a large recruiting team that was responsible for a few thousand hires over the course of a few years, as well as managing the recruiting process and operations um, for the kind of global recruiting organization, over 400 recruiters, obviously tens of thousands of hires. So I've seen this work at scale. I've seen this work um, at a small level. I've advised many startups over the last uh, couple of years uh, to build out and, and successfully run their own recruiting process, and uh, many of which are self-service. So a uh, ton of experience in this space and hope you find uh, this insight helpful. Um, if you do have any follow-up questions, please drop them in the comments. I'm happy to make more videos uh, on this, but this is really kind of going back to the basics as I realized a lot of the content I'm producing is kind of really going into the weeds on some kind of complex topics. And I wanted to kind of circle back up and say, hey, this is how the process works. So let's jump straight in. Um, if you're not familiar with the recruiting process, I'm gonna stick my face over here. Um, there's really four main uh, recruiting channels. So four ways that you could potentially be hired into a role. So uh, the one that people are most familiar with is the inbound application. So if you're going uh, straight from college or, or graduate school, or maybe you're looking at um, more entry level or volume roles um, in kind of sales or customer service, you may find that most of the opportunities are really available through inbound applications. So the company would post a, the job on a, on a board or on their kind of internal applicant tracking system. Uh, you apply to that job and then you may get a response from a recruiter and kind of start that recruiting process. Um, generally, depending on the type of company and the type of role, you might expect 25 to 40% of roles to be filled this way. Um, through my experience working on some more senior roles, this is like almost 0% of the, uh, the funnel um, most actually come from the second channel, uh, which is outbound sourcing. Now, outbound is generally a, a more proactive approach on the recruiting team. So in this case, the recruiter will go to LinkedIn or they'll go to GitHub or they'll go to another platform and actually search for the candidates that they're, they're interested in. Um, so they already have their specification for what they're looking for. They'll try and find someone typically who's doing that role or has the potential to do that role well. They'll reach out to them and see if they're interested in a move and then they'll start the recruiting process that way. So again, this could be you know 20 to 35% of the role. Um, I've seen this get as high as you know over 90%. Um, but this is a really good channel for um, more experienced folks or very specialist roles where there are very few potential candidates in the market and they're generally not looking for roles so you don't, you don't see them apply uh, to positions. Uh, the third channel, which is one that a lot of companies really want to push as hard as they can, is the referral channel. So in this case, someone that already works at the organization understands what a new role is looking for and the overall kind of culture that the organization is embedded and really wants to uh, refer their former uh, coworkers or friends into the role to get them a position. Um, this can be a really great way to uh, get hired, um, especially given that um, the, the conversion rate through stage of the recruiting process, which we'll cover in a second, um, generally tends to be much higher. Um, so this is a, a, a good kind of win-win in that if you can get referred to a role, um, you'll have a higher likelihood of passing through the initial stages and really be able to demonstrate your expertise. But also the person referring you generally gets incentivized with some kind of bonus. So you know they may get a little kickback from the organization as a thank you for referring people through the process. And then the final channel, which is generally much smaller, but it's still a really important channel, is the internal uh, promotions and kind of internal mobility channel where existing employees are looking for new opportunities. They see uh, job postings either externally or potentially on an internal uh, job board, and then uh, uh, move through a recruiting process to be considered for that role. Um, and so the, the four main channels, um, I'd say depending on the type of role, the main one will either be inbound or outbound um, as you're thinking about the uh, kind of overall structure for that recruiting process. So the way that the recruiting process actually works, it's similar to a sales process, if you're familiar with that, um, but we think about it in, in terms of what's called a funnel. So you think a funnel is pretty wide at the top, pretty narrow at the bottom. And essentially what you're trying to do is filter as many kind of qualified candidates in at the top, and each stage of the recruiting process is designed to slim that selection down so that by the time you get to the point where you want to make someone an offer, um, you have a very small selection of very highly qualified candidates who are going to do very well in this kind of role. And so that's what you're trying to accomplish. So top of the funnel, um, what you're doing is review and applications, um, looking at resumes, looking at LinkedIn profiles, trying to understand, has this person got the right level of experience and is actually motivated in a way that they could perform well in this role um, and then reaching out to them or, or moving them through the funnel so you can actually get to know that individual a little bit more. Um, the next stages of the process will generally gradually, you'll learn a little bit more about that individual. So there'll be kind of skills tests, behavioral interviews, 
before the kind of final round, which is generally going into a lot more depth, trying to understand kind of key drivers, motivations, competences of that individual, generally on-site interviews, um, even if the, the role is remote, uh, could still be a, kind of a core part of that. Um, and that helps the uh, hiring managers to make a final decision as to who they're going to hire. And they'll generally select from just a couple of people. So if you're getting through to a final round, you've got um, a much better chance of being selected for that role. Um, at least you're in consideration for it. So. That's the uh, recruiting funnel. Um, one thing to bear in mind is the channels uh, convert at different rates as you go through the funnel. So I'm gonna use a quick scenario here and I've marked up this table. Assume that the final round interview is gonna contain one person from each channel. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but I think it helps to demonstrate this point. So if you have four candidates that are gonna go through a final round assessment, one applied to the role, one was sourced from LinkedIn, one was referred by an existing employee, and one was an, in, is an internal candidate Assume they equally have a chance of getting uh, that kind of final offer, um, but only one of them is going to get it. Um, what you can do is actually have a look at how many candidates did it take to get down to that final one for each channel. Um, and what you'll find is that um, the internal is the most efficient referral the next, then outbound, and then inbound. Um, and what's really interesting is you, um, with the kind of the outbound and the inbound, you actually have an additional step in the process where you have to go from kind of application or, or uh, kind of shortlisted to qualified uh, candidate, essentially. So um, you may have a thousand people apply to a role, but only a hundred of those are actually qualified to do that role and that they have the right level of experience and skill set. When you're doing an outbound um, search, you can generally uh, refine the search criteria a little bit more. So the likelihood of finding someone who is qualified and experienced in, in the areas that you uh, find important is much higher. So let's say that it takes a thousand qualified applicants to get hundred qualified candidates in the inbound funnel. You may reach out to 80 qualified uh, candidates on LinkedIn and you've already searched for their uh, backgrounds, but only 20 of them are interested. Um, and so you can see how that moves throughout the process. So from hundred qualified applicants, maybe only 10 get through to the final hiring manager screen and only one of the 10 is gonna go through to that final round. Whereas you're outbound because you already have shortlisted them, you already know that they're kind of motivated, they have the right experience, so they're going to convert at a higher rate. Generally, we see referrals convert at an even higher rate at each stage of the process because they already have that connection within the organization, they already understand the culture, and they probably have that individual who's referred them to kind of like coach them through that process a little bit and explain a little bit more. Uh, the internal is obviously going to convert at the highest rate because they're already uh, likely a high performing employee within the organization, and so they're kind of more likely to be selected to go through each stage. So um, how does this actually play out when you look at the kind of big picture? You can see that if you're applying to a role, um, assuming that you're qualified, and so you kind of, the 900 candidates have already been removed because they're not qualified, you're still competing with 100 qualified applicants. And so you really have to stand out against that, that pool. Um, if you've been sourced, um, generally you're a shortlist already of, of 80 candidates in this example. Um, so all you need to do is be open to moving, and then you're gonna get shortlisted down again. So your conversion rate is much higher. Um, if you've been referred, again, you, you're much more likely to get uh, move through the funnel because you already have that pre-qualification that's generally a higher quality standard because you've been referred from someone internally uh, and then if you're already using an employee obviously you're going to have the highest likelihood um, so what does this mean if you're running the job search process right now um, i think there's kind of three main takeaways the first one is don't just think about individual channels if all you're doing is applying to roles there is a chance within a volume you're going to get some some interviews um, but there are, there are many different approaches. Um, so look for ways that you can um, you can apply. Look for ways to optimize your profile so it's um, it's searchable for recruiters who are trying to find good candidates to, to fill a role and you match the keywords that they will likely be searching for. And a good way to do that is look at the job descriptions that are posted and make sure that your LinkedIn profile contains the same keywords listed in that job description. Um, even better, look for referrals. If you already know someone in the organization, have some informational interviews. You'll not only learn more about the roles and the, the internal culture, but there's an increased likelihood you're gonna get referred uh, to that, that kind of role. Um, and then finally, if you're interested in an employee, um, you've got the best chance. So if you are looking for a new role before you look externally, just see if there's anything internally um, that's gonna be a potential fit for you. Um, next is actually think through, as you're going through each stage of the funnel, understand what the recruiter or the hiring manager is looking for and how you can provide that information. So manage that process yourself, be proactive. Um, and then finally, um, if you're just getting into the job market right now, think about ways to build the network so that you're not just going in blind, um, but you can actually kind of grow um, the number of potential loose connections that you may have um, in order to in increase the chances of uh, getting a potential referral or an opportunity um, as you go through that process. Um, so that was my kind of quick uh, walkthrough of how the recruitment process works. Um, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I track how many people subscribe based on which video, and that helps me to determine what content uh, to produce in the future. Always really, really appreciate the comments as well. Um, but you can find me online, over email, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, and uh, whatever it takes. I'm uh, always excited to uh, meet people. Thanks, take care.